Hi, this is Chris from Toward Optimized Practice, and in this video we're going to look at the practice management reporting in NetAccess. So you can see I have the practice management reporting window open here, and on the left here are a number of boxes, uh, each with a different color that corresponds to tabs in the patient's chart in the EMR. And in each of these boxes there's a number of fields that you can use to set your search parameters, and I won't go through them all because there's just too many, uh, but I will point out a few um, of the trickier ones. So here in the demographics box, uh, one of the limitations is that you could generally only choose one physician with which to, uh, to search by. Um, you can get around that by using the groups function here and if you set up for your groups with multiple providers then you can search by groups instead of by primary provider. Uh, but you do have to take the time to set up your groups. Another limitation is that there is no uh, ability to add a second demographics box um, the way that you can with some of the other boxes. So for example, I'll just open up this profile box. You can see that here I have the ability to add a second um, criteria selection. And I also have the ability to choose a not qualifier. I don't have either of those things here in the demographics section, so that's another limitation of using this section. Because of those limitations, sometimes it's easier to just not open demographics. If you need to specify population criteria, then you're going to have to have demographics open. But otherwise, you may be able to leave it closed uh, and specify uh, in other ways the, the list of people or patients that you want to get. One more other thing that I'll point out in profile here is that this field here, which searches for um, diagnoses in the profile, is actually labeled description, and I don't know why that is, uh, but it's worth knowing that this field actually refers to diagnoses, not um, a description field like the description field in a task. You'll notice here in the visits field that when I click on provider, I do have the option to choose all. So if I could leave demographics closed and specify all provider here, uh, that might be a more helpful way to, to, to run a report. And you'll also notice that here, and just about everywhere in, in the search function, that the date fields uh, come in pre-filled and they're automatically in play if you open the box. So always be careful about your date fields and make sure that they're correct, otherwise you, you might get a search that doesn't work. The task section has quite a lot of fields that you can search by. Um, and so it can be very handy. One of the things you have to be careful here is the difference between observation date and task date. Uh, remember that the task date is the date on the left-hand side of the task, and the observation date is the date on the, on the right-hand side of the task. Uh, it's important to keep those straight because, um, again, that can really mess up your searches if you're not careful. In the observation box is probably the most powerful search tool in MedAccess right here, where you can search by observation. Because MedAccess is all discrete data fields, if you can find the correct data field, you can report on it. Sometimes that's tricky, uh, and there are some system boxes that um, where, where searches won't work. But for the most part, if you know the name of the field you're looking for, you can specify it here and you can search by it. One trick here with the medications box, uh, as of this recording, the not function wasn't working. Uh, that's a bug and MedAccess is aware. Uh, so maybe if you need to use a not function here, it might be worth uh, giving the support line a call and just checking to see if they've sorted that out or not. Otherwise, uh, lots of powerful search possibilities in the medications box. Um, and if you need to, uh, say, find a patient who's on uh, a couple of different medications or you need to Search for patients who are on one medication and another medication. You can do that here, uh, and it works very well. The allergy box is fairly simple, just like the allergy tool itself in the EMR. But one thing you can't do here is to uh, report on patients where the allergies haven't been reviewed. Uh, so that's a limitation uh, worth being aware of here.
in the goals section. Again, you can report on a number of things in goals, which is which is very handy. Um, one thing to be aware of, though, is that goal history isn't really um, isn't really uh, that robust in the EMR. So you can generally see when a goal's been been manipulated, but you can't see um, a history of things like um, whether a goal was met on a specific day or not. Uh, that information is not saved in the EMR. Use of the billing field is quite powerful uh, because you can find bills by billing code and also bills with specific diagnoses in them. And sometimes it's really handy to be able to search for a particular a bill with a particular diagnosis because that can indicate whether a patient has a specific condition or has had a, a certain kind of procedure done. And finally, the appointment box uh, is also quite powerful. Um, you can search by visits, but that will only show you uh, patient charts or patients where a visit was actually created. Here you're looking to see if there was an appointment uh, and you can search for um, the gamut of things, cancelled appointments, no-shows, uh, left without being seen, um, specific kinds of appointments, physicals or uh, other different kinds of appointments. All of that stuff can be searched. You can search uh, whether a resource or a particular room were used all, the, all of it very handy and quite powerful if you want to get a full list of activity in the clinic and then sort through it in, in Word, or excuse me, not Word, in Excel. Uh, and that brings me to the right-hand side of this where we look at outputs. So those are all the search parameters and different things that you can choose to uh, set criteria for your search. But then there's also all of the things in this list here that, choose, that uh, allow you to choose what sort of output you'd like to get. Uh, and there's a lot of them and you probably won't use uh, all of them, but there are some that are quite handy to, be, to, to use. These age histograms are great for very quickly getting a breakdown of a panel and also seeing a number of patients. Um, some great statistics here in the statistics section. Uh, third next available uh, patient count, those things are the things that you might use. Ratios are very handy when you get to be a little more advanced and you want to build um, some build dashboard widgets, you'll use ratios quite a lot. Uh, and then the lists here probably is what you'll use the most when you're doing your searching. Uh, and the appointments list, uh, very handy when used in conjunction with appointments, you can get a full list of um, of appointment information for a specific period of time. Patients list gives you a, a, a comprehensive demographic information for patients, uh, etc. That's just a few of these and it's worth experimenting with them to see what kind of uh, output they'll give you uh, and it's worth taking the time to check. Hmm. Interesting. It's worth taking the time, sorry, to check, to check the online help and just see what what is intended to your what you're intended to get from each of these reports or what they're intended to show and how and what sorts of criteria criteria that they'll work with. That's a very quick look at practice management reporting in MedAccess. I hope you find it found it helpful. Uh, thanks for watching and have a great day.